Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Look what just came in today. It's the Chasing Innovation Gladius um, ROV, basically an underwater drone. And this thing's pretty cool. It has a wireless controller and it's got a uh, buoy that floats on the water and then it's got a 100 meter tether where you can go 100 meters deep about from that buoy and then operate it wirelessly from the shore or a boat. So this is gonna be pretty cool. Stick around, we're gonna unbox this, set it up. So let's get started with the Gladius underwater drone. Okay guys, so as you can see, this is a giant box, so I'm probably gonna have to put this on the floor to open it up, but this is it. It's basically a luggage box, like a suitcase. Nice metal handle on top with a padded grip. It's got a set of keys here in this little sheath. You can actually lock the box. And it's even got a pull-out arm here. It's actually got a press-in, pull-out arm for rolling it if you wanted to, like if you're traveling, and some actually some nice rubber wheels here. I'm not sure if those are bearings or not, but um, it's actually a pretty hefty case here. Some rubber feet for setting it down. So really nicely done. And it's also got some rubber feet on the, um, the end here if you're gonna be using uh, the handle on top. So a good solution if you're gonna be traveling with it, um, just put everything in this box. But it seems like it'll hold up pretty well. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing, just two latches here. And before I pop this open, this is actually an Indiegogo backed uh, drone. I went ahead and put down the coin for this because it looked like it's gonna be a pretty awesome underwater drone. So here we go. So on opening the top, first thing we have is the instruction manual here. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Some padding. It looks like it's very well packaged. And on the top we have this foam here where, you know, it can push in and secure everything down really well. So here it is. Here's the Gladius. Look at that thing. So it's basically a little remote control sub with a 4K camera. It does 4K, 1080. I think you can even go down to 720. And it can also do 14 megapixel pictures, I believe. So pretty awesome looking thing. So first thing on this side is actually the tether. And this is um, hardware linked directly to the, the drone here, the underwater drone, the Gladius, I should say. I'm not sure if I, I would really categorize this as a drone because to me a drone is um, a device that can do um, automation with GPS and stuff. So this doesn't have any GPS on it, so it's gonna be full manual control. It does have like an accelerometer and a compass in it, so I guess it's halfway between a regular and an underwater drone. Anyway, so this is basically the reel with the tether and the buoy, so it's all inclusive here, and then you can pop this off, and this will float in the water. This, you just keep on the shore to reel it up and carry it around. So this box is kind of huge, so I'm just gonna slowly take everything out, see what we get, and then we'll go through everything on the table. So, just a bunch of little packages, and these are, um, you know, not really, very professionally wrapped. They're just plastic bags. This is the initial run of these, so you know they don't have any super awesome packaging. It looks like that's the Handjoy controller. Um, but we'll go over through all this. Another ballast ballast module for salt water. This thing will go in salt water and fresh water. So that's all the little stuff. And let's take out the two big items. Here's the actual tether and the buoy. Set that down, and here's the drone itself. So it's this giant, <laughs> well, it's not that big, but it's in a giant box. It's this, it's packaged very well, actually. I might have to do two hands on this. They've done a really good job at, you know, packaging this thing up really tight so it doesn't get banged around in shipping. So we got this, just this foam collar here to help protect it in moving around and shipping. And here it is, look at that thing. So that's the Gladius. Really quick here, it looks like um, those are all the foam cutouts for the whole package. And I think they did a pretty good job. I was thinking that this box was gonna be waterproof and I think it's rainproof, but there is no rubber seal on the edge here. So there is a notch though, there's a ridge here and there's an accepting little channel on top. So you will get a pretty good, tight, nice and tight fit. Um, but it's not going to be waterproof. So if you're spraying it off, you might get some some water leakage here. So I really would have liked to see some kind of you know little strip here, little rubber strip. Maybe you could put a little bead of silicone on this just to make it a little more waterproof. Besides that, pretty awesome case. 
Okay guys, so I'm gonna get to the Gladius and the Tether and the buoy in just a second, but I just wanna go through everything we get in the package like I normally do. Just so we don't miss anything and you guys know what to expect. This looks like a charger for one of the devices, either the drone itself, the ROV, or uh, that wireless buoy also has a battery inside of it. So let's see what the difference is between the two chargers. I'm assuming one charger is probably gonna be bigger than the other one. Yeah, so this would be for the drone because the drone actually has two LiPo batteries in each side, one in each side, and then the smaller one's gonna be for the buoy. And this looks like just the US power adapters that we're gonna plug into our wall. This looks like regular computer type of plugins you can see on one side, they have this fitting. And then each power adapter has that standard computer type power plug. This bag here, we actually have two Wi-Fi antennas. So this is gonna be like a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi control between a little Bluetooth controller to your device, and then your device is gonna to link to this buoy back there. And these will attach right to the buoy for that Wi-Fi range. This looks like a little crank for the buoy. So you're gonna stick that into the back of the buoy, which we'll be going over in just a sec. So when you have this, this is 100 yards, so over 300 feet. Was that about 326 feet or so? And so when you're reeling this thing in, you're gonna to wanna to make it nice and tidy. So they give you a really good system here. You can pull this whole thing off of the caddy and this is just a removable crank. Okay, uh, ballast module is what this looks like. It comes with a fresh water version on the bottom, but it's just a screw in ballast for more weight. And this is gonna be for seawater. So I'm assuming this one's gonna be a little bit heavier. You can see that there's just some lead weight in there and this just bolts up right to the bottom. Uh, let's just look at that freshwater one real quick. There's a freshwater one, it's pre-installed. So that's, if you're gonna use it in fresh water, you keep that one on. If you're gonna use it in salt water, obviously, switch it out and put this one on for better buoyancy compensation. And there it is, so the Gladius manual, it's showing everything here. There's the controller, which we're gonna look at in just a second. And that's the buoy, it shows you how to do everything. Put on the antennas. So a pretty thorough manual. And then we have this little side, little paper that's just showing you what's included in the box. Okay, and the last thing in the box is this little bag. And this little bag is saying, I thought it said, yeah, hand joy. So it's a little Bluetooth universal controller. Not sure how cool I am with that. It's, I mean, it, it's definitely, if it works, it works, but they're just basically throwing in a universal, you know, USB controller that you'd use for any Android or Apple device. And here it is. So it kind of looks like a little Xbox controller type of thing and it's spring loaded and you can see how wide it's pulling out there to fit a cell phone. I don't think you can fit a tablet unless you have like a, an extender bracket. Here's just a little micro USB cable to charge this and the charger looks like it, yeah, it's right in the bottom there for charging. And as you can see, this one does Android and Apple devices. So you just have to switch which device you have and you can um, Bluetooth bind to your device. Let's go ahead and take off this film. Looks like it comes with some nice protective film. I just wanna take all this off and really see the true face of this controller. So just peeling all this protective plastic off. This is actually cool to prevent, you know, scratching and shipping. So bear with me while I just peel all this off. This is always, I love doing this because you're just seeing the final product underneath. Okay, and there it is. So there is the Handjoy Bluetooth controller. We've got two spring sticks here. We've got a select which actually has some plastic left on it. So we got a select here, a start, these four buttons, and then we have these buttons up here. And I think this is the bind button here, and then we have uh, bottom right and left triggers and top little bumper triggers. And this is how this thing works for control. So I think this is a mode one type of control. Maybe it's actually a mode two, but it just feels like a mode one. Um, this is gonna be your pitch and your roll. So the craft is gonna go, you know, roll, pitch. This is gonna be your throttle up and down, and then this is gonna be turning the head. So actually, exactly the same. This is actually a mode two, because that's what you would do with quadcopters. This little B-pad here, this is not working for this, and none of these buttons seem to be working for this. 
Um, this is basically a back button and this you just hold in if you're going to be binding it to a new Bluetooth device or to search for a Bluetooth device for your first time. Select here is going to give you either manual or stabilized control, kind of like a quadcopter where you can go into acro or stabilize where you it'll try to self-level. That's how you switch that. And then start and stop here is how you're going to arm and disarm the motors. And here's how we're starting and stopping uh, camera and video functions. And we'll go over this and put a phone in it here in just a second and see how it's all working after we take a look at the Gladius. Okay guys, so we went through all this stuff here in the bottom. Without further ado, let's go and check out the Gladius ROV itself. And here it is, check this thing out. This thing was announced about a year ago or so and they've made a few changes to it. It was a back campaign, I think they earned around $500,000 or so to put this into production. But here it is, so it's a plastic shell, two-piece shell. You can see that it's got a seam here. There's the branding, Chasing Innovation there. And it's got brushless motors. So there's four motors. There's one, two, three, four, two on the back, two kind of in the mid front. And here is the bubble with the 4K camera. So check this out, it's got a little bumper here. And the cool thing about this is they actually changed this before they released it. It used to be just a globe, like a full round globe. And um, I think it's great that they changed that because now they have a little bumper um, to protect the globe itself. And you can remove this thing and there's also a potential for some like filters. So hopefully they come out or somebody comes out or you can make them yourself. Some kind of little filter attachments because we all know that if you're just taking raw footage underwater, it might look a little bit um, too green or blue. So that's a good option. I'm glad they went and changed it to this little bumper here. And another great feature is check out these high power LEDs. So these LEDs you can remotely control from the controller when you have all that linked up. And you can go from zero all the way to 100% brightness and it is a gradual ramp. So you can really, really have the ability to adjust the lighting how you want in situations. And don't forget this thing will go down almost 100 meters so it's gonna be black and dark down there. We've got venting throughout. And the thing about this thing is it's got these canisters that are sealed in here. There's three canisters with the batteries and the main flight controller or the main controller. <laughs> I guess you could call it a flight controller and the camera up here. And so the water is gonna go through the inside of the body, but it's all sealed within. So you're not gonna get infiltration in your electronics and stuff. Here's the tether. We can see how it's attached. Looks like it's attached pretty good to the top. We've got this rubber collar here inside and this is like a really high strength. I think it's a couple hundred pounds you can pull on this. And it's got a very high tensile strength uh, brake strength. Flipping it around to the bottom here, as we could see uh, before, we have that sea freshwater module. We can switch that out with just a screwdriver if you're going to go in the seawater. Let's take a look at these brushless motors. I'm not sure what the specs are on these, but they are brushless motors anchored in there with propellers. There's more venting on the bottom there, and we can see all of the uh, stainless steel screw holes. There's going to be stainless steel screws throughout since you can use this in salt water. Swing it around to the back, we have more venting where the water's gonna be flowing through. And check this out. So this is a really good system they chose to do for actually charging. It looks like you could put your own little tether on here if you wanted to, because this is a screw cap. This feels aluminum. And they actually changed this before production. This used to just be a compartment you opened up. But I like this better, where they just inset this screw cap in the canister. It's got two uh, silicone seals there, little rings. So that when you do screw this thing on, you get a really good seal for the charge port and there's not gonna be any water at all going in there. This part actually feels a little bit brittle. Hopefully it's not gonna break hitting things, but if there was anything that felt a little brittle, it's actually this, this back part here, this little wing. And we can see how it's just sandwiched here between the two, sh the two halves. And here's a little bit of a closer look at the propellers. So three bladed propellers with a nice little scoop. And then right on the shaft, it's just got this stainless steel shaft and lock nut. And if we look down here, we can see that there is quite a bit of grease there uh, where it enters the craft. So it looks like they're, they're covering us for water infiltration. But that's it guys, that's the craft. Um, not too sophisticated on the outside. All the stuff that's going on is gonna be on the inside. Let's go ahead and take a look at this buoy over here. So here's the buoy tether module. 
switch places with the Gladius. And here it is, cool. So this is where we would put our antennas on. So these are just 2.4 gigahertz antennas. We got two of them and we just screw those on. It does kind of look like they just screwed right into um, the plastic here. So I'm hoping they, <laughs> they've got some kind of seal for waterproofing this, this portion. I don't see any silicone like sticking out there. But anyway, those are the two wireless antennas screwed on and that's what it's gonna give the signal back to your um, Android or Apple devo device that's attached to the remote control. And this, you can see how this is a nice little carrying handle here. And then this, this part back on the left side is actually where we're gonna put in the crank. And so we can crank this easily you know what I mean? And um, spool it up after we're done with use. So two things you can do, you can either just leave it on this spool on the shore and still be wireless from your controller to this guy and just have this on the shore and this thing will just reel out as the Gladius goes out. Or you can take this whole thing off of the mount. Let's just try that real quick. Oops, I keep pressing the start button. So you can take this whole thing off. You can see how the Platform actually has little rollers on it, bearings and everything in there. It's got a seal there, large bearing on the crank portion. So a really well thought out little, little deal here to carry this spool around. I'm gonna set that on the side and let's just check out the actual buoy. So the buoy will float in the water just like this. So technically, I think at first they were gonna give it about a little more power and you're gonna have up to 500 meters of range from here to here, but I think they had to down that because of FCC, so it's only 100 meters now between your controller and here. And then you've got this tether, so it's another 100 meters from the tether to the craft, hardwired. So that's kind of what you gotta do because wireless signals can't penetrate underwater, so you wouldn't be able to control the craft. So the solution is to float a buoy on top so you have the wireless coming out of the water. It'll just float like this on the water. Here's our power off and on. You can see if I power it on. Sounds just like a drone. I'm not gonna boot it up right now. In here we've got lights. We have a little clear viewing window with a little silicone guy in there. Then we have another one of these little charge ports where we have, again, that little unscrewing cap with the silicone rubber and there's also some silicone grease in there. So we're gonna use a smaller charger for this one. And that's it for the buoy, guys. You can see on the back here we have kind of the end of the tether, I guess, where it's connected in there. And then this is notched, so when it slides on to the handle, it'll just slide in one way and notch in like that. So again, this is what's gonna float out there in the ocean, so hopefully we have a good connection between this and our cell phone, because as we know, there's no GPS on this, so if you lose it, you're gonna have to go out there with a boat or paddle out and retrieve it. Okay, so I think that pretty much goes through everything except on how to connect it to the controller. So this is using Bluetooth again, and I'm gonna be using Android. So I'm gonna switch this little button over here to Android. You can also see there's an apple there. And we're gonna see the light start to flicker. You see this little green button that's lighting up super bright? Go ahead and click and hold that until you see that uh, light kind of change to uh, orange blinking like that. So what that's doing is it's putting the device in uh, Bluetooth search mode, and then we're gonna turn our Bluetooth on now we're gonna search for the Handjoy controller. This is showing up on the available devices, so I'm gonna go Handjoy here, and let's see if it pairs. So it's saying pairing, and there we go. So we are paired to the Handjoy, pushing it like this. Looks like if you did wanna use like a tablet mount, what might work perfect is this is a mount for my Mavic drone. Um, it looks like this will slide and stick in here perfectly. And then you can clamp on your tablet of choice right in the top here. Turn on the whole Gladius with this button here. Just pressing it once, we can see the lights come on. Okay, and the lights went off and then it did its complete boot up process. So now we can see that this has a blinking LED light here on the top, which is actually good for you know, like location out in the ocean there or the, the water, so that's pretty cool. And now this thing should be putting out the wireless signal coming out of the, um, the buoy there. So then we go down to our wireless settings and we're looking for something called the Gladius. And there it is. So I've previously connected to the Gladius, so when you do press connect for the first time, you're just gonna have to punch in the code one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
and you will connect. Of course, there's no internet for this connection, so it's gonna give you the warning. This is the if.dive app. You can see this one in the center, this white and black one. You're gonna to need to download this from the Apple or Android store. It's called if.dive, and just go ahead and click on it. And it's got a little bit of a boot up bar on the bottom. You can see how it's going all the way. We're connecting. And there we have it, so check that out. So there's our user interface, pretty awesome. Uh, very similar to stuff like the DJI or similar little Wi-Fi wi drones and stuff. But we can see the whole, what we're seeing. Like if we're going underwater, we can see what's going on. Let's see what the lag is on this. So you're gonna get a little bit of lag, at, you know, obviously because it is um, Wi-Fi. So you can see that there is about, I'd say that's about 200 milliseconds of lag. But hey, if you can go long range with it, that's not too bad. Also, the, the picture does look very sharp and clear. You can see how it's pretty close to this um, tether and it's pretty sharp. Now it's gonna look a little bit different out of the water compared to under the water. I think they tuned it to be sharp and clear underwater, obviously, because this is an underwater craft. Okay, let me just spin it around here. There's a little stormtrooper in the corner of the house over there saying hi. Let's go through some of the um, readings here on the app. So at the top corner we have stabilize. You can change this to stabilize or manual. And remember I was talking about it's gonna self-level underwater if you let off the sticks. But if you're in manual, it's just gonna be kind of like acro mode on a quadcopter. I think eventually the buoyancy does eventually uh, float it up to level. So you don't really have to worry about um, it staying at a certain angle if you do take off the sticks in manual mode. There's our battery power of the drone at 60% right now. Here's our light intensity on the front headlights. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the initial unbox, but you're just pushing this button here and you can see how the lights are getting brighter or dimmer. So you, what they say is you don't really want to turn on the lights out of the water, so I definitely just keep those in the water when you're turning it on, just so it has that cooling from the water. Anyway, there's the temperature, so it actually does have some kind of temperature sensor on it, and so it's gonna read your water or your outside temperature there. There's our compass heading. There's to show if our Wi-Fi is connected or not to the buoy from the phone. And then this is a little options menu. There's our camera start and stop. Here's switching between our video and our pictures. Then the top one is our gallery, so we can go in and see what we've, the photos we've taken. And so this is pretty cool. You see how there, we have this little 3D rendition of the craft. And so when you are um, using an FPV, you can see that the compass and the accelerometer are actually giving you a graphic representation of how level or skewed this thing is. And if the compass is working also, if it's facing away from you, towards you or how it is orientated to north with the compass. So that could be very valuable if you get like lost out at sea and you're, you're confused on which direction you're going. Of course, it doesn't have any GPS, so that might be a good option for the next um, Gladius II. And one of the main things is check out our depth. So it does have like some kind of depth gauge on board. So you're gonna see uh, in real time what your depth is in meters there on the screen. So very cool. Let's go ahead and just boot this thing up and see um, just how it how it sounds. Let's arm it. So you can either arm it by pushing start here. So I'm gonna push start. You're gonna see the motor unlock. There we go. And we can see that the, the um, propellers are actually spinning because it's in stabilized mode up there on the left. And it's just gonna try to keep itself stabilized level in the water. So you see as I move it, just like a quadcopter, it's gonna try to keep its level in stabilize. If we press this select button, that's gonna change us to manual mode. So you, you see how you don't hear the motors anymore trying to keep it level. So that's pure like acro mode if you wanted to use that, so pretty cool. You can also change it just by touching the screen. You see how I can change into stabilize or manual there. And you can also unlock and lock from touching the screen. So it's unlocked. Okay, so this is something they need to fix by software. You can see how it's already armed, but it's saying slide to arm. It should be saying slide to unarm. So that's something I've actually reported to the Gladius team to see if they can fix that. And then with my version here, I was having some trouble with starting and stopping the video and the pictures. So I'm hoping it's just a software fix for them. Other users haven't had this issue, but watch when I try to take a picture. This has 64 gigs of onboard um, solid state memory for recording and taking pictures, but what, watch what happens when I try to take a picture. 
SN verify failed. So I get that every time I try to take a picture, a video, or change between picture and videos. Technically, when I'm going, I can't take any pictures in the water right now until they fix it. But I can at least record this screen for you guys when I'm out there, um, you know, going in the ocean and getting some video and stuff. So if you wanted to manually uh, record and, and stop recording your pictures, you press the bottom right trigger. And then I think the left one here is gonna switch between video and pictures. So I hope you guys enjoyed that unbox, inspection, and setup. Uh, for the Chasing Innovation brand new on the market Indiegogo backed Gladius underwater ROV drone. And I hope that was informative to you. We'll get some video of fish, maybe we'll get some sharks in there. And we'll also test the range and the depth of this thing to see if it really is how they say it's gonna be. This is a brand new first generation of this thing, so there are gonna be some bugs, and I've got my fingers crossed that they're gonna fix all these, and this is gonna be an awesome product. Anyway, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.